Beloved, today, I need you to understand that if you are not in the ark of safety, mm, that's what I said, if you're not in the ark of safety, it's time now to make a visit to Calvary's tree, to look up to the Son of Man that the Father sent down to be your perfect lamb, to make sacrifice with the blood that will cleanse, that will wash, that will renew you and restore you back to the Father's house. Beloved, today I need you to know as we end this year, you need to end sin. As we end this year, you need to end trouble. As we end this year, you need to end doubt. As we end this year, you need to end disbelief and accept for the fact that the Lord Jesus has been sent on the earth. Ah, I want to go now to the book of St. Matthew and let's just look. There's going to be a meeting. meeting Come on. Old fashioned meeting. This is the Apostle L.A. Anderson coming to you now toward the end of 2020 and getting us ready now to enter into 2021. I want you to understand today that the Word of God is going to be the guide and the teacher to guide us into that special place where we have peace in the things of God. Let me read to you from the book of Hebrews, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. I'm going to read to you from the book of Hebrews chapter 10, and I want to begin with verse number 10. Hebrews 10, 10. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Verse number 11. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. Verse number 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till the enemies, his enemies, are made his footstool. For one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Verse number 15, but the Holy Spirit also witnessed to us, for after he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their heart, and in their minds I will write them. Then he added, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, where is that remission of these? There is no longer an offering of sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiness by the blood of Jesus, verse number 20, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, listen to me very carefully today. Let us draw near with a true heart in the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Verse number 24, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Verse 25, and not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together, as a manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Verse 26, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remaining a sacrifice for sins. Listen, beloved, this is the Apostle L.A. Anderson coming to you today from the old campground and letting you know that as we end up this year, as we move forward to the new beginning of 2021, 
I need you to understand that there is a place called righteousness. There's a place called true holiness, and that is found in the word of the living God. As we have given you over the last three segments, the truth from the book of Genesis to the book of Malachi, from the book of Matthew to the book of Revelation, that God's word, God's word is the word that we must depend upon, and God's word is the food that we must eat and live thereby. Listen, beloved, I want you to know that the word of God has clearly stated that he sent forth his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came all the way down through 40 and two generations, that he was born in the earth through a virgin by the name of Mary, who knew no man. And she accepted the Holy Spirit to guide and to put in her a holy thing, which will be born to save us from our sins and to renew us back to the Father's house. Beloved today, I need you to understand that we need preachers and teachers who are going to take us back now to the things of God, who are going to move us into that place where we are washed through the word of the living God. I need you to understand that even in this book, we see in the book of John chapter 3. Let me go there right quickly to the book of John chapter 3 and verse 15. It says to us that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Listen, beloved, it is my task, it is my joy to come to you today to tell you that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Jesus who is the very son of the living God. And yet he was born of flesh that he might take upon that perfect sacrifice where we messed up back in the ages of past and where we refused to believe the word of the living God and was disobedient and the covenant was broken. He came to restore and to bring us back into fellowship with the Father. And so the Bible said to us, in St. John chapter 3, and let me just read this again, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And this is the verse everybody knows, St. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, beloved, you and I today must understand that we're living in a time now where the word of God is what's going to take to cleanse, to renew, and to bring us back into divine fellowship. Listen, from St. John chapter 15, and I just want to read verse 3 and 4. St. John chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. It says, you are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Listen, beloved, it's my task to let you know today that without Christ, there's no life. Without Christ, there's no hope. Without Christ, there is no future. Listen, beloved, you and I must understand that all of the other religious leaders that have been born into the world have died. And they are not coming back. But there is one who was born into the earth and he died. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. I need you to understand today from the book of Acts, the church book of the church that is still in this dispensation, that is still open. Listen to me. The Bible said to us that the former account I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Verse number two of Acts number one, until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he has chosen. Verse number three, to whom also he presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse number four, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait on the promise for the father, 
which he said, you have heard from me. For well, John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, when will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power which the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the utmost parts of the earth. Listen, beloved, it is my task and it is my joy today to give you to know that we're living now in the last days. Here we are now at the end of one year and beginning of a new. We have seen trouble, trials, and tribulations. We've seen wars and rumors of wars. We've seen governments uprising and governments falling. We've seen men who were hungry and men who killed themselves. We've seen all kinds of trouble with the virus and the pandemic. But I need you to know that there is one hope, and that hope is found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Oh my God, there is an enemy of our souls who's trying to destroy and who's trying to take away the promises of God. But I need you to understand today that the Bible says the enemy comes as a thief to rob, to steal, and to destroy. But in John 10, 10, part B, Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Listen, beloved, I need you to understand that as we end this year of 2020, as we move into 2021, in the month of January, you need to move in Christ. You need to get involved in the word of God. You need to get deep down into the wells of salvation that the spirit of God might spring forth in your life. This is the apostle L.A. Anderson, and I'm excited about what God has done in 2020, how through trials and tribulations and downs and up times, we have been kept by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Listen, beloved, I need you to understand today that there is a purpose in your life, and that purpose is to live again. Listen, behold, I need you to understand from the book of Revelations. And let me just read uh, chapter 20, Revelations 20. And I need to read to you verses number 4, in Revelations 20 and 4. And then I want to read Revelations 21. Revelations 20 and 4 said, I saw thrones and they on them and judgments was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark on their forehead or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. How are you listening to me today? We're living in a time now where the future is now moving forth and moving upon us, and time is running out. It's time to be saved. It's time to be delivered. It's time to be set free. It's time to be born again by the blood and the water of life. Listen to Revelation 21 and 4. The Bible says for our future. Did you hear me? The Bible says for our future. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And verse number five says, then he who sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, write for these words are true and faithful. Beloved, today, I need you to understand that if you are not in the ark of safety, mm, that's what I said. If you're not in the ark of safety, it's time now to make a visit to Calvary's tree, to look up to the son of man that the father sent down to be your perfect lamb, to make sacrifice with the blood that will cleanse, that will wash, that will renew you and restore you back to the Father's house. Beloved, today I need you to know as we end this year, you need to end sin. As we end this year, you need to end trouble. As we end this year, you need to end doubt. As we end this year, you need to end disbelief and accept for the fact that the Lord Jesus has been sent on the earth. 
Uh, I want to go now to the book of St. Matthew. And let's just look at verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew, Matthew, the first book of the Bible. And listen to what it says here very carefully to you and to me. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. It says this, and I only need you to hear me. It says, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Verse number 22. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Listen, beloved, I come today to give you inspiration. I come today to give you more hope that if you turned to the things of God and lean on the word of God, you will not be disappointed in this life nor the life to come. This is the apostle L.A. Anderson. And I want to instruct you as we get ready now to end 2020 and move into 2021, that prophetically you have the word of God that is standing in your move, standing in your line of duty, standing as the goal and the promise of God, that the word of God has come to save, to heal, and deliver. Remember what John 1 and 1 said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him that was made, and there was nothing made that was not made that was not made by him. And so today I need you to trust in Jesus. I need you to lean on Jesus. I need you to put your hope in Jesus and get washed, cleansed, and renewed, and be brought back into that relationship where there's fellowship in the garden of prayer. The songwriter said, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice that I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God is disclosing. Today, today that you hear my voice, he said, harden not your heart. Oh, we are leaving today. Death is in the land. Death is around the world. But before death comes, you have an opportunity to declare Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. You have an opportunity to ask him to come into your heart, to be received on the throne of your heart, to let him sit, rule, and reign through the power of the anointing of God. Listen, beloved, this is the apostle. And I want you to know today that it is a crucial thing now because you need to know that there are preachers. You need to know there are teachers who are wolves in the pulpit, who have come not to bring to you the word of God, not to bring to you the things of God, but to lead you into a path that is not of righteousness. But I come today to tell you about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the one who the Father sent into the world, that you and I might be brought back into relationship and brought back into kinship. This is the son of the living God who was the perfect sacrifice, who shedded his blood, that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. And so today I need you to know today that there is a call coming, and that call is the call of death. And when death comes, it ends this physical life. But there is another life to come. Because you and I are going to have to be resurrected, either in life or in death. And you're going to have to be able to say, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I took the blood of Jesus and washed and cleansed my spirit and allowed him to have the right of way. Or you're going to be able to say, I heard it, but I rejected it. And then you're going to hear him say, depart from me workers of iniquity. Listen, beloved, it is as clear as the nose on my face. It is as clear as the ears on my head that you need to hear a word from the Lord. You need to understand that in these last days, somebody has to tell you the truth. 
Somebody have to tell you that living right is going to pay off. We used to sing a song years ago in our church, payday is coming after a while. Payday is coming after a while. When you have acted and moved upon the things of God, the payday is going to be eternal life. Listen, my friend, this is the apostle, and I'm concerned about you as we enter now into a new dispensation, as we enter now into a new year, as we enter now into a new place, as we enter now into new directions. You need to understand that the word of God is right. Listen to me from the book of John, 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 chapter 21. I need you to know verse 24 and verse 25. This is the disciple who testified of the things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Verse 25, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Listen, beloved, this is the Christ, the son of the living God, who came down to this earth, who suffered, bled, and died, and was crucified, was buried in Joseph's new tomb. But I got news for you as the sign of Jonah. He was in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. But thank God that he got up with all power in his hand. He had both the keys to death and hell. And he said to us in his word, Go ye now into all the world and to tell them who I am. Teach and preach the truth. Let me go there to the book of St. Matthew chapter 28. Lord have mercy. St. Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to look at verse 19 and verse 20. This is what the word of the Lord said to us. And I need you to hear that this is the final words of the book of Matthew. He said to us, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, hmm, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. That's my commission. That's the commission of the preachers and the teachers who have been ordained and proclaimed and appointed and anointed by the Spirit of God to teach and to preach this Word of God and that the Word of God is none other than the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, the soon coming King, who is the perfect Lamb of God that came just to justify you and to bring you back to the house of God. Listen, beloved. I need you to understand something. We're not on TV because we have nothing else to do. We're not on the radio because we have nothing else to say. We're on here to proclaim that Jesus Christ has made a way out of no way. He's brought you out of sin and shame and brought you into righteousness. He's brought you into holiness. That's not a denomination, but the word of the living God. For the Bible says without holiness, no man is going to see the Lord. And so today, I need you to get restored. Today, I want you to come back to the things of God. And listen to this old preacher from the book of Jeremiah. Stop backsliding. From the book of Isaiah, believe Emmanuel is with us. From the book of Ezekiel, the majesty of God, the wheel in the middle of a wheel is among us. And from the book of Daniel, the kingdom of God is coming that you might have a place for eternity. And get back into that book of Acts where the church has exploded and the word of God is real. The word of God that can make and bring you into life and that more abundantly. Get back into the book of Jude where you can see fakes and false prophets entering into the church and you become aware of what they're saying and doing because you know the word of God. And finally, to the book of Revelations, where you can see the eternal Christ, who's the first and the last, who's the beginning and the ending, who's the alpha and the omega. Oh, my God, who is the revealed Christ in all of his glory? 
many crowns on his head because he's the king of kings and lord of lords who's riding now into the pathway to declare this earth as the home and the place where the righteous shall abide and where you and I will have a place of eternity that is created by the things of God, where the new Jerusalem is coming down out of heaven but never coming to the earth, a city of four square, 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, a cube where the very throne of God and the tree of life is inhabiting, the waters of God that are there crystal as clear. Listen, beloved, I want to invite you to come now and go with me to the city where the Spirit of God has the right of way, a city where there is no corruption, a city where there is no bribes, a city where there is no sin, a city where righteousness shall abide and where men and women will live forever to fall down and to worship and to give God glory. Oh my God, let me get to the book of Revelations right quick and to the fourth chapter, Revelations number four. And I want to read to you what it says here. Listen to me, Revelations number four. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever. Verse number 10, the 24 elders fall down before him who sit on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by you, you will, they exist and were created. Listen, beloved, it's time to worship. It's time to praise the Father who sent the Son, who gave his life, that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. It's time to thank him for sending the Holy Ghost to guide, to teach, and to lead us into the ways of righteousness. Listen, beloved, I want to wish you a happy new year. I want to wish you a year that has Christ involved. I want to wish you a time of fellowship and a time of God's glory, but you cannot receive it unless you enter in at the straight gate and come in knowing that you have been cleansed, washed, and renewed from your sins. Again, this is the Apostle L.A. Anderson here on the old campground, here telling you that Jesus is the light and he's the light of the world and you are the little lights to shine and give other men hope to know that they can be rescinded of their sins and brought into a place of righteousness. This is the apostle saying, Happy New Year. Glory to God. Be blessed and know that you have entered into a brand new phase of life. And until I talk to you again or see you on the Let me say again.